है एवरी वन सो वेलकम टू माई टेंथ लेक्चर ऑन द कोर्स ऑर्डनरी डिफरेंशियल इक्वेशंस सो इन द लास्ट लेक्चर वी सॉ वॉट डू मीन बाई सेकेंड ऑर्डर डिफरेंशियल इक्वेशन वॉट डू मीन वॉट डू यू मीन बाई बेसिस वॉट डू मीन बाई जनरल सोल्यूशन ऑफ अ डिफरेंशियल इक्वेशन सो टूडे वी आर गोइंग टू सी द फर्स्ट मेथड डेट विल हेल्प यू टू फाइंड द सोल्यूशन ऑफ अ सेकेंड ऑर्डर डिफरेंशियल इक्वेशन एंड एंड द नेम ऑफ दैट मेथड इज रिडक्शन टू फर्स्ट ऑर्डर नाउ द नेम इज सेल्फ सजेस्ट वॉट द मेथड डू इज it will reduce your second order differential equation into a first order differential equation and once it is reduced to first order differential equation we can use the six methods that we have seen in our first seven lectures of this playlist on how to find the solution so this method will help you to convert a second order differential equation to a first order differential equation and these are the families that can be reduced to first order differential equation the first one is whenever you have a homogeneous and linear and one solution is given to you then such kind of differential equation can always be reduced to first order differential equation second case is whenever you have a differential equation that involves dependent variable first derivative and second derivative that means in this differential equation x is not present x is our independent variable so whenever you have a differential equation not involving independent variable then those differential equations can also be reduced to first order differential equation and if you have a differential equation that does not involve y that means if you have a differential equation that involves x derivative of y and double derivative of y so if you have an equation that does not explicitly involve the dependent variable y then that can also be reduced to first order differential equation so this two i will talk in my next class today we will only concentrate on homogeneous and linear differential equation okay so this is the scenario we have a second order linear differential equation where p and q are continuous functions of x y1 is a solution of this differential equation which is given to you our aim is to find another linearly independent solution to this differential equation and why that is so because if you can recall from my previous lecture i told you that if you have a second order linear homogeneous differential equation then if you take any solution of this differential equation if y is any general solution then this y is nothing but it is of the form c1 y1 plus c2 y2 where y1 and y2 forms the basis set or y1 and y2 are linearly independent functions so as soon as you have two linearly independent solution your job is over you know that the general solution has to be linear combination of those two linearly independent functions so now here y1 is given to me my job is to find another solution which is linearly independent with respect to y1 and once i have y2 this is how my general solution will look like so let's try to find y2 okay now we take y2 is equal to some multiple of y1 see if i know that if my y2 is some scalar multiple of y1 then it is a again a solution by by our superposition or the linearity principle so let's take y2 as a multiple of y1 and we will try to find u if u comes out to be constant then this is a scalar multiple of y1 and it's a dependent function that will not help me so what i want is when we will do the calculation we want is your u should not be a constant it should be it should be a function that involves x and because of this my y1 and y2 will become linearly independent and our job will be done so let's try to find y2 so if y2 is u times y1 you find derivative of y2 single and double derivative and now since our y2 is a solution of this differential equation it will satisfy this differential equation and now you substitute the value of y2 prime and y2 double prime over here and what do we get is my y2 prime is nothing but u y1 double prime plus 2 u prime y1 prime plus u double prime y1 prime you plug in over here this is my first three terms then you have p into y2 prime which is my these two terms plus q into y2 so this is the last term and now you can take out u common from this term this term and this term from these three terms you can take out u outside what is left is u double prime y1 prime and from this and this you can take out u prime outside so this is what i get now what is given to me y1 is a solution therefore y1 will satisfy this differential equation and therefore the term inside the bracket will become zero so this goes away what is left is u double prime into y1 plus the term into the bracket into u prime 
now as you can see you, this, you have a differential equation in u prime and u double prime and now you can reduce from here to first order differential equation and that's why the name reduction to first order now how can you do that you just replace your u prime by capital u and your u double prime will become capital u prime so if i substitute these values over here what do i get i get y1 into u prime plus the term in the bracket into u equal to 0 now your u prime is nothing but du by dx you take this y1 over here on the right hand side so this is what you have now you can bring this u on the bottom and you take dx over there and now you can see this term only contains x why because y1 is a solution so it's a function of x its derivative will also be a function of x your p is a function of x so this whole thing is a function of x and here you have u so you could do variable separable so integrating what do we get we get ln of u equal to minus 2 ln of y1 minus integration p of x dx plus c well you can ignore this c i will tell you later why so this is what the solution you have now from here what is your u your u is nothing but you can combine the things so you take minus 2 at the top and you take exponential on both side so log will go away here only exponential will remain so this is what you have now you can find your capital u because y1 is the solution given to you p of x is the coefficient of y prime provided the coefficient of y double prime is 1 so you know p of x you know y1 you can find capital u once you have your capital u what was our small u our small u was nothing but it will be integration of capital u and once you have your small u what is your y2 your y2 is nothing but u times y1 and as you can see your small u is nothing but integration of a function see integration of any function is never a constant even if your capital u is a constant when i do integration i get x over there and if, if u contains some x then while integrating definitely it will contain x so your u is not a constant and since your u is not a constant this implies what is your y1 upon y2 your y1 upon y2 is nothing but 1 upon u right because what is your y2 it is u times y1 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 will get cancelled i get 1 upon u so y1 upon y2 is not constant if y1 upon y2 will become constant then y1 and y2 will be linearly dependent but since here the ratio is non-constant therefore your y1 upon y2 is not constant and hence y1 is not a multiple of y2 or y2 is not a multiple of y1 and thus y1 and y2 are linearly independent solutions and as soon as you have linearly independent solutions you can write down the general solution so what will be the general solution in this case so if y of x is any solution then y of x is nothing but it's a linear combination of y1 and y2 because y1 and y2 are linearly independent which is nothing but c2 u times y1 if you want you can take out y1 outside so this is how your general solution will look like provided if one solution is given to you and your differential equation is a second order linear homogeneous differential equation so that's the proof i hope the proof is clear if you have any doubt you can ask me in the comment section okay before wrapping it up let's take a couple of examples so that the method will be clear to you okay consider this second order see it's a linear and it's a homogeneous differential equation and one solution is given to you so we can apply our previous method now one thing is you can do all the procedure again but we won't be doing that we have derived the formula so we will be directly using that formula so what does the method says by reduction of first order your y2 is nothing but u times y1 what is your u it was nothing but integration of capital u and uh, therefore what will be your and what was your u your u was nothing but 1 upon y1 square e raised to minus integration p of x now here what is your y1 this is your y1 let me call this as y1 what was your p it's not 2 okay be careful when we did this procedure the coefficient of y double dash was 1 so your p will be nothing but 2 upon x okay so here it will be 2 by x what is integration of 1 by x ln x so here you will be having 1 upon y1 square means what 1 upon x raised to minus 2 cos square x into e raised to minus integration of 2 by x means e raised to minus 2 ln x means your x raised to minus 2 so which is nothing but you get 1 upon cos square x which is nothing but sec square x and therefore your capital u is x square x therefore what is your small u 
it is integration of capital u which is nothing but 10x if you want you can write plus c over here let me call this as c1 we will see that you can ignore this c1 okay so your u is this so what is your y2 your y2 is nothing but u times y1 so u times y1 what is y1 x inverse cos x and if you multiply this inside what do you get is this is what we have so this is my y2 now what will be your general solution your general solution will be nothing but it will be the linear combination of y1 and y2 so what do we have here is your y of x if y is any solution of given differential equation it has to be of the form c1 y1 plus c2 y2 c2 into this y2 x inverse sin x uh, let me call this as c1 prime because I am already using c1 over here so let me call this as c1 prime plus c2 into c1 prime x inverse cos x now what you can do is from here and here you can take out your y1 which is nothing but x inverse cos x as outside and you can call c1 plus c2 c1 prime as another constant c3 so ultimately what it becoming is you are having c3 x inverse cos x plus c2 x inverse sin x okay so ultimately this constant is becoming a redundant constant so what you can do is you can ignore this constant here itself and when you ignore that constant here itself you get c1 x inverse cos x plus c2 x inverse sin x so therefore usually when we find small u we avoid writing the constant or even if we write we take we at the end we write for simplicity take the constant as zero and therefore no need to take the constant over here because at the end that gets combined over here so this is how your any solution of the given differential equation will look like if you take a function which is not of this form then it won't be a solution of the given differential equation okay now let me give you one last homework question so this is the differential equation with you make sure your p is not minus 2x okay you have to divide and this is your y1 find y2 and at the end find general solution so comment your y2 as well as the general solution in the comment section so I hope this method is clear. In the next lecture, I will tell you the remaining two methods which I told you at the starting. So I hope you like this video. Have a nice day.